In science labs around the world, some materials are so dangerous that even a tiny amount must be handled with robotic arms behind thick glass. These aren't props from a movie. They are real elements that can kill in ways most of us can hardly imagine. But what exactly makes certain elements so deadly? And why do scientists still risk working with them? Let's explore the truth. What makes an element dangerous? When scientists call an element dangerous, they usually mean it has properties that can cause harm in ways we can't easily control. In chemistry, danger often comes from toxicity. Some elements, like arsenic or mercury, interfere with the body's natural chemistry. They can damage nerves, shut down organs, or slowly poison a person over time. But chemical toxicity is only one side of the story. In physics, danger often means radioactivity. Certain elements are unstable, breaking apart and releasing radiation. This radiation is invisible, but it can rip through cells destroy DNA, and cause cancer. Unlike poisons, which usually harm only when swallowed or inhaled, radioactive elements can damage you simply by being nearby. Another factor that makes an element terrifying is instability. Some materials can explode, ignite on contact with air, or contaminate environments for centuries. For example, radioactive elements like cesium-137 don't just harm individuals. They spread through soil, water, and food chains, leaving behind a trail of danger for generations. So, dangerous in science doesn't just mean fast death. It can mean long-term contamination, invisible damage, and risks that linger far beyond one lifetime. Now, let's take a closer look at one of the deadliest elements ever discovered, polonium-210. Polonium-210, death in micrograms. In 1898, the brilliant scientist Marie Curie discovered a new element hidden within uranium ore. She named it polonium, after her homeland, Poland. At first, it seemed like just another scientific breakthrough, but no one realized how deadly this element truly was. Polonium-210 is extremely rare in nature and is one of the most radioactive substances on Earth. It releases alpha particles, tiny bursts of energy that can tear through living tissue. Outside the body, these particles are stopped by something as thin as a sheet of paper or even by your skin. But if polonium dust is inhaled, swallowed, or enters through a wound, it becomes a silent weapon. Inside, those same particles bombard cells at close range, shredding DNA and causing organ failure. To understand its power, consider this. Just a few micrograms, less than a single grain of table salt, is enough to kill an adult human. There is no taste, no smell, and no immediate warning. Victims only realize something is wrong when it's already too late. A famous case shocked the world in 2006. Alexander Litvinenko, a former Russian agent living in London, suddenly fell ill. Doctors discovered his tea had been laced with polonium-210. Within weeks, he died a slow and agonizing death, his body poisoned from the inside. Polonium-210 shows how something invisible can be more terrifying than any weapon. But it's not the only element that carries such fear. Cesium-137, the lingering killer. If polonium is a silent assassin, cesium-137 is more like a slow, invisible curse. This element is not found in nature in large amounts. Instead, it's created as a byproduct of nuclear fission, the same process that powers nuclear reactors and atomic bombs. What makes cesium-137 so dangerous is how easily it spreads. Unlike polonium, which has to get inside your body directly, cesium dissolves in water and behaves much like potassium. That means plants absorb it, animals eat those plants, and eventually it makes its way into our food and water. Once inside the body, it settles in muscles and soft tissues releasing beta and gamma radiation that quietly damages cells and raises cancer risks. One of the most chilling real-life examples happened in Goiania, Brazil in 1987. A medical machine containing cesium-137 was stolen from an abandoned clinic. The thieves found a glowing blue powder inside and thought it was something valuable. Neighbors handled it, even spreading it on their skin because it sparkled beautifully in the dark. Within weeks, several people died of radiation sickness and hundreds were contaminated. Entire neighborhoods had to be demolished and buried under concrete. Cesium-137 proves that danger isn't just about immediate death. It's about how a substance can poison entire communities for decades. But not all deadly elements kill with radiation. Some use chemistry alone to destroy life. Mercury and arsenic, silent poisons.
Not every deadly element glows or emits radiation. Some kill quietly, using pure chemistry to break the body from the inside. Two of the most notorious examples are mercury and arsenic. Mercury is a shiny liquid metal, fascinating to look at, but incredibly toxic. At room temperature, it releases invisible vapors. Breathing them in slowly damages the brain and nervous system. Centuries ago, hat makers used mercury to cure felt for hats. Many of them developed tremors, hallucinations, and memory loss, leading to the phrase, mad as a hatter. A touch of beauty turned into a lifelong curse. Then there's arsenic, once known as the king of poisons. Unlike mercury, it doesn't shimmer or smell. It's colorless, tasteless, and easy to slip into food or drink without notice. For centuries, assassins and even members of royal courts used it to quietly remove rivals. Symptoms, vomiting, stomach pain, convulsions, would often be mistaken for natural illness. In the 19th century, arsenic even found its way into wallpaper pigments. Families living in richly decorated homes sometimes fell sick without knowing that the green dyes on their walls were slowly poisoning them. Mercury and arsenic remind us that death doesn't always come with explosions or radiation. Sometimes it hides in plain sight. Now, the question is, if these elements are so lethal, how do scientists study them safely? Handling the untouchable. When dealing with the most dangerous elements on Earth, ordinary safety rules simply aren't enough. In specialized laboratories, scientists work behind sealed glove boxes, thick containers with built-in gloves that let them handle lethal materials without direct contact. For radioactive substances, they often rely on robotic arms to move samples ensuring no human hand ever comes close. The labs themselves are designed like fortresses. Walls are lined with lead shielding to block harmful radiation. Air is constantly filtered and kept under negative pressure, so nothing escapes into the outside world. Scientists wear heavy protective suits, full face shields, and dosimeters that measure their radiation exposure in real time. Even a small mistake can mean a lifetime of health consequences. So why take the risk? Because studying these elements has saved lives. Radioactive isotopes are used to treat cancer by targeting and destroying tumors with focused radiation. They sterilize medical equipment, ensuring hospitals stay safe. Some isotopes are vital in detecting diseases inside the body. Even mercury and arsenic, despite their deadly nature, have been studied for medicines and industrial uses. These precautions show that even the most lethal materials can become tools for progress. But when safety fails, the results can be catastrophic. Now let's look at what happens when these dangerous experiments go terribly wrong. Accidents and catastrophes. Sometimes the danger of deadly elements doesn't come from experiments in labs, but from accidents on a massive scale. Two disasters in modern history show us just how devastating radioactive materials can be when control is lost. In 1986, the world witnessed the Chernobyl disaster in the Soviet Union. A reactor exploded during a late night test, releasing huge amounts of radioactive isotopes like cesium-137 and iodine-131 into the air. Entire towns had to be abandoned and the area around the plant, the exclusion zone, remains unsafe for people even today. Forest, soil, and rivers were poisoned. The invisible radiation caused cancers, birth defects, and health problems that still affect generations. Then in 2011, a massive earthquake and tsunami hit Japan, leading to the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Power was cut, cooling systems failed, and radioactive water leaked into the Pacific Ocean, spreading contamination far beyond Japan's shores. Fishermen saw their catches ruined, and some areas remain restricted even years later. What makes these disasters so terrifying isn't just the immediate destruction, but the way radioactive elements linger for centuries. They sink into soil, flow through rivers, and even slip into human DNA, leaving a shadow that can last longer than any human lifetime. But sometimes, science isn't just about accidents or destruction. Sometimes the most frightening experiments lead to discoveries that change everything. Why scientists still study deadly elements? Even though polonium, cesium-137, and arsenic sound terrifying, scientists still study them because they hold incredible value. Polonium was key in unlocking the secrets of radioactivity. Not Knowledge that later powered nuclear energy and medical treatment. Cesium-137, while dangerous, helps researchers track soil movement and even measure the age of certain materials. Arsenic, once the king of poisons, now finds limited use in electronics and specialized medicine. It's a strange paradox. The same elements that can destroy life are also the ones that can save it. But this raises a bigger question. 
what do these elements really teach us? We've explored polonium's invisible alpha rays, cesium's lingering contamination, and the silent poisons of mercury and arsenic. We've seen how accidents like Chernobyl and Fukushima scarred our world for centuries. The truth is, the most dangerous element isn't simply the one that kills the fastest, but the one we choose to use for harm or for healing. In careless hands, these elements can destroy entire communities. In careful hands, they can fight cancer, power cities, and advance science. But here's the final thought. If a few atoms can cause such chaos, what will happen when we uncover elements unknown to Earth? The answer could change everything we believe about matter itself. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dive science stories.